Do you think there's an option before we could look at Optimus on the moon? Do you think we could look at a possibility of Optimus on the ISS or another international space station? I mean, you have the Astro B that's been, um, these are these cuboidal little robots that have been uh, assisting astronauts on board the ISS for a few years now. They've been hugely successful. Um, is there? Do you think there's a case for Optimus to be tried out first on board the ISS? Optimus is designed to work in uh, gravitational space, uh, not in zero G. So you wouldn't need the legs because it, if you look at the B, it gets around really easily just with these little fans. It's really kind of amazing at how well it's able to control itself because it doesn't have to worry about gravity. Uh, now, having arms would be nice, but you might want to have more spindly arms because the Optimus arms are probably overpowered for almost everything you'd want to do. Where Optimus would make more sense is probably not inside the ISS, but outside the ISS, maybe to do some of the EVAs. And you might design it a little bit differently to be able to move around in that environment. Um, right. And of course, there are already bots that are that are doing it that are kind of look like a centipede, but you know they're a traditional, much larger arm. And in many cases, those arms are just there to position the astronaut to where mm. <laughs> the astronaut needs yeah, to be yeah. to be able to perform something. So um, I think you would see something, but sans legs there's almost no reason for the bot to have legs uh, in space i think it would be really cool to have a version of optimus that has four four arms instead of two arms and two legs mm -hmm. you know just <laughs> you know, yeah, kind of a doc yeah <laughs> i was just yeah. about to say that yeah because you know ideally you you know if you want to really get leverage you kind of want more than one arm grabbing your, yeah. your base and, and you want to move along these handholds, and then you also can have you know one to three arms free for uh, manipulating things, and that's yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You, but also, yeah, in terms of the arms, I think. Often wish that they had more arms that they could use. Yeah, yeah. When they're going on those space ones. Yeah. So, so but probably th yeah. three would be an interesting configuration. You know, the, the question is, do you need four? There'll probably be the arguments back and forth, just like when they were designing the Optimus hand. The yeah. question is, do yeah. we really need five fingers? And, you know, it's like most people say three fingers is like really all that you need. Uh, but they decided for and even um, the CEO of figure, I kind of asked him if he was able to drop some joint, what it be he said, uh, the pinky, because it seemed like they had a big argument with like, do we really need the pinky? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to arms, um, you definitely need two arms. And the question is whether the third arm is like all you need to be able to grapple and move yourself around. Yeah, but it might come I mean, in handy to have a second one if you both hands are busy. And like, okay, how do I go from one to the next? Right, and the, and then you have the, I mean, you have that that whole question of of the movement and 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 bracing yourself and all that. But then there's also the you can always use more arms for the work that you're doing because there's often, you know, if you just, I mean, we often run into that situation when we're doing work on Earth, right? Of wishing that we had another, an extra pair of hands because uh, you, you often have a work piece and then you have another piece that you're trying to join to, to it and then you have one or more tools that you're trying to hold or you're trying Which to are effectively your third and fourth arm the vice grip and everything else that's what that is yeah. right <laughs> yeah so imagine if you know you had that option of the extra arm to yeah so it, things. yeah and, and that again that comes down to a lot of people thinking the whole thing through and okay. nasa has been very good at that because when you look at the apollo spacecraft and everything you know i, I was sort of looking when the, the rover was going through and some of the elements on there and you know and them realizing, oh, we need to have an eye shade here and everything else because they thought the whole process through. It was like, well, where's the sun going to come in? If we need to look in the eyepiece, there's going to be a lot of glare. You know, every every little detail was already thought about on Earth. And of course, with a lot of simulation and training, they discovered, hey, it's a little bit hard for me to do this. We need to modify it. Because you want to make sure before you get up there, you've got every component that you need. You don't want to have more than you need and you definitely don't want to have less. Oh, sorry. Speaking of number of arms, before we jump to another topic, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Project Hail Mary, uh, Andy Weir's uh, book, and uh, for those who have read it, you know, Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Five arms. Five arms. Okay, so that's 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 an interesting creature. Yeah. Do we have any? Something are there handy. any examples? I thought trying to think. Are there any examples in nature of a five-arm? Right. I don't think there are. Uh, starfish. Well, starfish, starfish, I guess, right? Yeah. Starfish, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's an alien, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the five arms but come I, in I, handy. They sure do. I can't help but wonder. I mean, um, there is a safety case to be made to um, to deploy Optimus for 
extravehicular activities um, outside the ISS. I mean, do you remember the case of the astronaut losing um, what was a tool toolkit or a tool in space mm -hmm. recently, a few weeks back? Um, I mean, oh, just, God forbid you lose an astronaut. I mean, oh, yeah. fine. You just, I mean, if you lose, if you lose a bot, it's just another object in space. You know, um, I think there's a there's a case to be made at least um, to begin with for Optimus uh, in some form or the other for some limited yes. use for, 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 for safety. I think it's about time. NASA has been working for a number of years on coming up with these kind of astronaut robots. And more than, you know, what we see, like the big Canadian armors going around, they, they really haven't done that. And I'm not sure why not, because it would make a lot of sense to be able to do something. Absolutely. Um, the, the astronauts, I mean, the, the prep time they have to go through just to be able to get out. So if they need to get out there immediately, you have to wait a long time. Uh, the fact that you're like you're using some consumables and everything like that because you could evacuate that. So who, who knows whether they're yeah. they're you know that oxygen get whether it gets vented out or not. The um, and then you know what the suits it, have and it to limits do. to to um, how much how yeah. long they can be out there. You know sometimes yeah they, there, there's limits. They, they run into these hard limits and they have to come back before the work is done. And then it's just yeah like, yeah. So there, there's there's a lot of that. Whereas yeah, and it's it's very very costly to put an astronaut out there for an EVA. And doing it with the bot, and especially if the bot could be, you know, there, we're not worrying about any lag. So telerobotic would be very easy. You could probably even control it telerobotically from ground. Uh, there wouldn't be that much lag. And a little bit of telerobotic would even be possible in the moon because it wouldn't be that bad a lag. And we already are doing, let's say, um, t telerobotic operation within the solar system. If you look at a lot of the rovers that were sent out there, which are effectively a, a type of robot, um, at first they didn't really have much autonomy. It was, okay, we're gonna study the landscape. Once we like the landscape, we're gonna tell it to drive ahead so many meters and then wait. And then you had, of course, the very long transit time between the two, uh, the delay. So it was very tedious to get them to drive. Um, now I think the, the new rovers have a little bit more autonomy that they can start giving it goals, but still not full autonomy in the sense that it can just go ahead and do what it wants. Um, it's still getting direction and there still is that very long lag between them. So in fact, that's we're... ingenuity. The helicopter was mm -hmm. um, eventually deployed to do just that, to scout out for the rover. Yes. To go yes. Ahead. So, so you, you can put more and more things like that where yeah, it, it had to do a lot of the decisions of like, where's the safest place to land and everything else. So those were things that they could not, all they could do in the mission is say, here's the mission plan, now execute it. Um, and that's what a lot of the other robotic explorers that we had, you know, Pioneer, Voyager, and, and others is that they um, they were having to do some things on their own, but again, they were getting commands from Earth on what it was to be set up. If we start talking about robots that are doing, let's say, real work, they're just not kind of exploring a little bit here, and we take a look and review what they're doing. They have some pretty big goal you know, it could be a construction project or something like that. They need to be able to uh, operate independent. And, and that's when you need to have a really good artificial intelligence that's able to make the decision. So you give it the goal, you know, dig a, a ditch over there and yeah. it's going to figure out what's the best way. And it runs into any sort of obstacles. It has to figure out what the, that solution is going to be. Yeah. I mean, it, you eventually going to have to replace the ISS um, in a few years time. And that would involve building a new space station. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it is, there's a great case to be made uh, for robots like Optimus to be used uh, for that particular use case. Um, you could even train them on Earth using imitation learning. Um, you could also teleoperate them if need be to an extent. But I think a lot of those um, procedural problems could be and training could be taken care of here on Earth itself. And then you just send them up and then it's kind of like a, like a Lego set that you put together. I will say yes. that the uh, space stations that are in you know, design development phases right now um, that will replace uh, ISS, it, I, I, I believe that all of the designs um, involve a lot less manual assembly than the ISS required. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the oh, Chinese uh, station. Sure. Yeah. It was just like dock. Case in point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if you look at the EVA that's going on here, it's rather interesting. You'll see that the legs are of absolutely no value the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's, it's 
So they're, they're not really serving any sort of purpose to the outside. I don't know if, you know, they're just kind of dangling out there. I don't see them ever yeah. pushing it off, off anything else. You, you can probably kind of use them like a tail to, you know, balance yourself and orient, you know, just like wiggle them to. Just five arms should do, as long as it's tethered. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you could have an arm just, just dedicated to just snapping the bot on to whatever hold it needs on the outside of the ISS as it moves along. Cool. And you can even have a teleoperator from within. Absolutely. Easily. And oh, that's how the um, the robotic arms are done anyways. Those those big the Canada arm, Canadian yeah. arms that move around, those, those are all mm. yeah, teleoperated. 